Hello everyone, my name is Troy. Welcome back to the KOTLC fanbase. Today I'm going to be going over some of my personal theories that I have about the Keeper of the Lost City series after Unlock. Now I know we've done a lot of theories on our channel, but it's mostly reviewing fan theories, so I wanted to make a video specifically my thoughts, where some of my head is at right now in terms of matching up like mysterious characters to characters we know and what I think is going to happen. I also want to update you guys on how my single is going as I announced in my last video and it is going well. My debut song Don't Forget Me is coming out July 16th and I'm so so excited. I'm so proud of all that I've done and where I'm going to go even after because I feel like it's just going to get bigger as we go but I definitely want to can't wait to share my first song with you guys. But yeah let's get into the video make sure leave like subscribe and let's start talking about some theories all right so first i want to talk about the reddick family because they have always been kind of strange the main reason being the whole issue surrounding caprice which is morella's mom and i don't know we haven't really gotten a lot of information about morella's parents and that's where i kind of started to think what if one of morella's parents are kind of like involved in this whole thing and we don't know about it and so then i was thinking about some of the never seen members because i was like maybe something happened to caprice that wasn't her just drinking fizzleberry wine and so I thought of a character that we didn't really kind of explore a lot, and that was Trix. And Trix was known to be a guster, right? He was only in one scene or like in one plot. Trix um, helped to capture Wiley from the one of those towers at Boxfire and take it back to a never seen base. I also found out that Durand Reddick, Morella's dad, is also a guster, so I immediately started clicking it in place. I think Durand is the only known guster in the series, so I think it's very, very reasonable that Durand and could be tricks and it also makes sense for the fact that I was reading a bunch on the wikia and it says that let me see if I can find it caprice fell off a balcony which many believe was caused by drinking too much fizzleberry wine around the time Morella was a toddler she was a witness to Cairo's visit to Mysterium before her murder where she had taken into her possession a star stone that led to Lady Gisela and Lord Cassius's room Mr. Forkel had interviewed the witnesses on a day in which caprice had been struggling greatly during this time she repeatedly mumbled that Cairo should have been more careful so not only only does it seem like Caprice was sort of involved in um, Kyra's murder, it also seems like she was not truly in the accent because of Fizzleberry Wine, because it only says many believe was caused by drinking too much Fizzleberry Wine. And also, I want to mention that in the whole series, Shannon, Messen Me blah, 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 Shannon Messenger mentions Fizzleberry Wine once, and that is with Caprice. I feel like she would mention the Fizzleberry Wine more if it was actually important or if it actually did something. I feel like it would be weird for her to just have this weird backstory about someone drinking Fizzleberry Wine and getting a little bit tipsy when that doesn't happened throughout the whole rest of the series. It could be a coincidence, but I really think that her drinking Fizzleberry wine was not true and that Duran Reddick, her husband, actually pushed her off the balcony. And I know that's kind of dark, but it's kind of my theory because it, if you think about it in all situations and make sense, you know, Caprice kind of got too involved with Kyra, she found out too much, and Duran who was a never seen member was forced to kind of dispose of her or give her a brain injury that would make her not be able to remember what happened or something and so i really think it is going to be worth investigating and i really think that this could be a good theory let me know what you guys think about this one because i am pretty strongly um in love with it so this is a comment that I found on the wikia that I also really agree with, and it says, Well, this is interesting. We barely know this person, yet it's an immediate theory to believe that he may be a member of the Never Seen. Despite lacking in any concrete proof, I can get behind this. He's the only Guster we've really been introduced to, and it's much more interesting for him to be a character we sort of know. I've done a lot of writing unrelated to KFGLC, but I think that SM could potentially write him as Trix because it's a very satisfying plot twist. It's something fans have heard of. This isn't an original theory, I've seen multiple far more dedicated fans than myself post it, but it's possible that he used Wind to push Caprice over the balcony. And it didn't even have to be Wind, really. I think that he could have pushed Caprice himself, he didn't have to push her, but definitely the Wind could have too. And I want to note specifically that what this person's saying about Shannon Messenger writing plot twists, I actually have the same exact thinking. I had a conversation with Joey via text the other day exactly about this. Joey has been known to really love when new characters are introduced. Like, like say Sophie's biological father he really wants it, this person to be a new character that we do not know he doesn't like the twist where uh, people get 
that we already know or like turned out to be someone that we didn't think. And I actually kind of disagree with that. I actually really love, and I know the authors love doing this too, because it is entertaining to have a character that we maybe knew, maybe didn't know that too much, but they kind of turn and they're not who we expected. So for example, like if, um, say Mr. Forkel was Sophie's biological father, like we didn't expect him to, but all of a sudden we found out that he is. It's a great strategical like writing twist and a plot twist, and I think that is what Shannon Messenger is heavy on. She really enjoys having these characters like Orelai or Alvar or any characters like these that we didn't really expect them to be more than they were actually be more than they were. So it's really interesting to see how this might play out. Trix definitely probably is a person just like how Umber was. I think Umber and Trix could be maybe both of the Reddick parents, but I'm just really interested to see if this is right because I feel like I'm really confident in this theory. Okay, I talked about that theory for much longer than I needed to, so that means I only have time for one more theory in this video, but throughout the entirety of Unlocked, I only have one sticky note because this thing shocked me. It's on page 191. Um, you can kind of see some miscellaneous, like, people, blah, 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 like Lady of Despair, Geth and Rye, Mr. Errol. There is on the bottom right of page 191, we have Brant Alger redacted. And Shannon has been known to put redacted over any like unknown information or any information that might spoil something. So I'm just questioning why, Sh like from the first time that gave me a red flag. Why is Brant's last name blurred out? Why is that so? And so I'm thinking there might be more to Brant's story and that started making me thinking about who Brant could be, what could he be doing, and I immediately thought could Brant be Sophie's biological father? I know this is far less reasonable than the last theory that I talked about, but it sort of makes sense. I don't know why. Like, Brant's last memories were with Orlai, and Orlai was Sophie's biological mother. Maybe Brant and Orlai knew that each other were Sophie's parents, and I feel like this might not make sense. But I also feel like Sophie was always kind of had some sort of connection to Brant and Jolie too. Like, I feel like she was so strongly considering that Jolie was her mother that maybe Brant was her father. And I know that Jolie was not the mother and it would be Brant and Orlai, but it still kind of makes me question like, maybe Sophie has such a, just a strong connection to Brant and Jolie's story that maybe he was the one to do it. And then, okay, my other thought was like, why would Brant kill or attempt to kill Sophie if he was her biological father? It could have been a mistake. Maybe Brant didn't know what he was doing because I don't know how far into the past Brant was in the never scene. It seemed like it could have only been 30 years and we know that Sophie's DNA was frozen. Like, yes, Brant may have donated his DNA, but then they had to spend time making sure that Sophie was perfectly engineered, thinking that maybe Brant donated his DNA for Sophie. Then he got recruited by the Never scene. He had that whole discourse with Jolie and all that stuff. And that's what I'm thinking. And then he made a mistake. He was like, oh, this DNA that I donated wasn't really to like a cause for the elven world. Actually, it was the black swan and there are enemies and now I need to destroy Sophie. And so I don't know, I'm just thinking about this theory. I don't know if it's super reasonable, but I just wanted to put it out there because it seems sort of realistic. It seems a little bit realistic and I'm just, and it doesn't have to be the biological father part. I am just concerned why Shannon Messenger redacted Brant's last name. I'm, I'm confused. I've been thinking about this all day. I don't know where he would fit. I don't know where that last name would come in handy. Like, could he be related to Keith? Could he be related to any of the main gang? Could he be related to Aura? Like, any of the counselors? Like, I'm just so confused. And if you guys have any ideas, please let me know. But I'm really trying to solve this. Thank you all for, all for watching this crazy video that I put together. But if you did enjoy some of my thinking about the series, make sure to leave a like on this video down below. Make sure to subscribe for more content. I'm going to be rereading the series this summer, hopefully, so that I can get more theories to talk to you guys about. 
um, while we wait for book nine that comes out next year. Make sure to comment down below what, what you think, again, because I really want to talk about these theories. And also, make sure to comment down below if you're excited for my new single, Don't Forget Me, coming out Friday the 17th, or Friday the 16th. <laughs> Oops. And next upload, I will most likely have, like, my pre-save link, and you can follow me on Spotify, my new YouTube channel, and stuff like that. And it's going to be a great time. So thank you all so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and I will see you next time. Love ya. Stay awesome, and see ya. Bye. That was so weak. Let me do that again. <laughs>